welcome to the medistas channel in this video we are going to talk about a veterinary helminthology so let's get started so before learning about the what are helminth parasite first we should talk about what are exactly the parasite so parasites are those organisms which live at the expense of host you know parasites are those entities which are living in this earth which are totally dependent on their host whether it would be metabolically their nourishment at any aspect of their life, they are dependent on their host. Even they uh, suck the food which host eats. And as we know, there are five kingdoms. Out of these five kingdoms, two kingdoms contain the parasites. And these two kingdoms are Kingdom Protozoa and Kingdom Animalia. Now, the thing to understand is that Kingdom Protozoa contain protozoans, which are unicellular and they are eukaryotic as well. Okay. And they are, you know, unicellular. They are found in blood and there are many types of, uh, uh, you know, protozoa. You can see Babesia, uh, you can see Trachomonas. These are all the Leishmania, which I have already made a video on Leishmania and Trachomonas. So these are the protozoa. On the other hand, Kingdom Animalia contain two phylum, which ultimately and completely belong to the uh, parasites. Phylum platyhelminthesis and phylum nemathelminthesis. And the other uh, phylum, which is known as the phylum arthropod, uh, these uh, in this uh, in this group in this group, the mostly vectors are present. And as we know that vectors are those you know which carry which transmit the disease from one organism to the other organism. Okay, so these are the arthropod, which are approximately vectors. On the other hand, phylum platyhelminthesis contain three classes, as we know, class Terbilaria, class Gaspuda, and class Trematoda. Class Terbilaria contain Digesia. Digesia is the planaria, which is a free living, not a parasite. So, this class has been excluded from the parasite, while the class Gastor and class Trematoda contain a large amount of, huge amount of the parasite in it. And phylum nematelminthes contain the nematodes. So we commonly study in helminthology gastores, trematodes, and nematodes. Their species are, you know, circulating in the curriculum of the veterinary helminthology. This is the key point. We can say far uh, bird's eye view of the subject helminthology. Now we are going to talk about their little bit structure. Castors are tape like and they are bisexual. They are uh, hermaphrodite. We can say their male and female parts are found in one organism in their one body. While the trematode are leaf like, your structure, if you look at their structure, they will be looking like uh, leaf like and they are bisexual as well and they are unsegmented. You know, one thing except one species of. Uh, Trematode, which is a unisexual. All other species are bisexual. The name of that parasite we will be discussing in this proceedings. And on the other hand, nematodes are pointed ends and they are unisexual. They are not bisexual, they are unisexual. Their male and female organs are found in different bodies. Now, the platyhelminthesis, which contain the castors and trematodes. There are general points to distinguish between the, this parasite is a castor, this parasite is a nematode, just to distinguish between them. So, they are endoparasite and they are, you know, they can be ranged from uh, multiple multiple and several meters from they can be small as a millimeter and they can be large as several meters up to 50 meters as well and you are thinking that you will be wondering that maybe your mind will be boggling at how it is possible to live in the small intestine of a human or in any other animal or a your host such type of such bigger amount 15 meters such a big but and there is a digestive digestion process is poorly developed and may be absent like in tapo. And they have a well-developed nervous system, they are respiratory, and their circulatory system are absent. They are hermaphrodite, they are bisexual. For example, you can see that they are 
uh, tip like they have the segments you have you can uh, remember them in their back to picture a liver fluke tenia solium and tenia sejunica the example of the yes so on the other hand leaf like trematode you can see fluid like they are approximately feel like uh, they are also a bisexual acceptable one so the name of that one is the cystosomes which is a unicellular while all the trematodes are bisexual so the cystosoma which causes cystosomiasis now the, a little bit importance of veterinary parasitology uh, as we know that there is a lot of huge amount of importance of uh, learning the subject veterinary parasitology because we are always bound with the animals all surroundings okay and you know animals and pets are the animals which have taken the place in our bedrooms as well so we can say that these animals have become a part of our life so learning their uh, you know their parasites is have been a common uh, trend which should be learned by not only by the veterinary doctors or the medical doctors but by a layman as well so a veterinary parasitology is important as it deals with the parasite related to animals yeah and animals are companions bodyguards for home many people's business through poultry and livestock animals used for transportation and essentially their byproducts like milk cheese eggs meat are widely used by humans as well so treating not well to the animals can also make trouble for human health so we must be care about our animals because especially to uh, uh, to the livestock animals because we are the one who eats them now we have a castor some little points on them they are segmented okay and they are tape like segmented they are hermaphrodite bisexual they have hooks as well as they have a suckers and their elementary canal is absent now body divisions you know they are segmented so these are the names of their segmented body so their head part is known as the scolex the castor's head part is known as a scolex on the other hand uh, leading to the scolex immature segment comes which contain the immature eggs leading to the mature segment mature segments come which contain the mature eggs leading to the mature segments gravid segments comes which contain the reproductive system not the eggs and their life cycle requires one or two or three intermediate hosts as well you know there are some parasites which only are diagenic they are monogenic means they require only one uh, host to uh, to live both asexual and sexual their life cycle but uh, gastrod are the parasites which can have one two or three as well intermediate host in which they pass their uh, larval life cycle you can see over here uh, leading from here scolex you can see scolex had region leading to the mature proglottides which contain the immature eggs leading to the mature proglottides which contain the mature eggs and here we will found no eggs and here will be completely um, reproductive system we can see now we are we have a uh, features of trematode some features of trematode uh, they are unsegmented they are leaf like they are unsegmented and they have no suckers and no hooks nematodes are pointed ends their circulatory and respiratory system are absent digestive system is quite simple and they are unisexual this is all about the uh, you know this is a you know for short sighted view of the subject veterinary elementology hope you see in next video Please keep subscribing my video and keep liking, keep supporting me and thank you so much.